speaking of toxic fandom, this is something that is near and dear to our one and only Purple Valkyrie's heart. I am, of course, talking about The Sandman, which was a graphic novel by Neil Gaiman and has now been turned into a woke hellish abomination by Netflix, which will debut on August 5th. Purple Valkyrie, you had some additional news on this, but we did get a fuller trailer for this. Yes, we did, absolutely. So we finally got an actual trailer so we can see most of the cast and the characters in quotations that they're going to be portraying. We've also got a release date, which is the 5th of August, which a lot of people were kind of um, a little bit worried about because they've been kind of dragging this out for quite a while and there was no release date. And I watched this trailer and I... I've been critical of this show pretty much from the beginning, uh, as soon as we heard who was going to be cast. And let's be fair, very few of them actually look like the characters that they are nope. uh, meant to portray in the comic books. Now, people will say, well, they can look like anything they like. If that's the case, why don't they look the way that they're portrayed <laughs> in that case? In, in that yeah. Purple. I mean, it's not as if somebody actually not just wrote a book, but also drew every single scene. Mm-hmm. for the entire story <laughs> and not only like a, that like a story but part. they you know exactly what the characters look like and then of course there's the lore around this which was based upon several 80s and late 70s alt rock and punk rock mm-hmm. counterculture icons including one of the main characters here who was actually uh, race swapped and who, mm-hmm. who, who actually has a named person this is a woman who died not too long ago who was very critical within the alt rock alt scene that existed and to me it's incredibly disrespectful because there was a deliberate reason why neil gaiman portrayed those characters the way that he were, was done in the comic book and to me netflix had no business changing it to be honest a lot of this does fall on neil himself as well because he is heavily involved in this if it was a case of where they'd taken his ip and uh, they just kind of run with it i could kind of see where they were going but he is fully on board he has been from the beginning and he's actively defended this show multiple times on twitter yeah. when people have said yeah. you know I, we love these characters but we're not seeing the characters that we yeah. were expecting Max, what's your take on this? Were you a fan of the graphic novel? Is this a little too dated or too niche for you? I mean, what's your impression on this? I'll I'll be completely honest and say that Sandman was never something that I heavily dove into. Mm -hmm. My realm was much more like fantastical 90s you know, muscles yeah. and boobs. So uh, this was, oh, I, I was much more I respect that. Yeah. yeah, the material like this was almost too and inc- like purple. Uh, maybe uh, you could agree with me here, but this is almost like a Watchmen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's very, yeah. oh, it's very yeah. deep. Stylized. There's a lot of yeah, it's very stylized. When you read Sandman, there is so many little subtle things in the writing. It's the reason why it's um, gotten so much praise. But I can't agree more with what Purple said earlier in the fact that if these characters are drawn to be a specific way, which is what comic books are, it's a visual medium, Mm -hmm. to take that away from the then adaptation of that onto the screen, why make the comic book in the first place? Why make the adaptation if there was a clear-cut vision for how these characters needed to be? Even Neil Gaiman is kind of going back on that at this point. Yeah. Zax, what about you? Did you ever get into the Sandman at all? Yeah. I like Neil Gaiman in general. I like his books. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, this one, for whatever reason, even though I've heard it so good, I've, I've never got into it. Who else would love to see Purple Cosplay has death from Sandman after her birthday Valkyrie makeup? Me? I would like to. <laughs> oh, I can do that. I'll second, I'll second that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I could do that. I, I've got a black wig. I, yes, <laughs> sure. That would be cool. Tell you what we'll do when it uh, when it drops. We will do a oh, review of it, and I will yes. uh, dress up as Death to do the review. How about that? That's that would be there fantastic. Um, she'll effectively kill two birds with one stone, showing how Death should have looked, and mm-hmm. we get a great cosplay. So it's a win-win across the board. Good idea, Daniel. We've also had confirmation that Jenna Coleman's character, who is going to be Joanna Constantine, is not the Joanna Constantine that we thought we were going to get from the books, but she is actually a gender-swapped version of John Constantine, but a more powered-up version, they've said. You know, this this I remember this graphic novel having some pretty kick-ass women in it. I don't know Mm -hmm. why they needed to add more whammon, because it was pretty whammon-tastic already. 
part of me thinks they're doing this on purpose to to kind of get a reaction from people to see what happens and to say well you know you just don't like female characters you're all bigots now i like the actress i think she's fine you know she's great i didn't particularly care for the accent that she went for in the trailer she's trying very very hard to be a slightly posh version of cockney and it's not really working very well but it says um gamain described coleman's joanna constantine as a powered up with a more expensive white trench coat rather than the filthy faded raincoat that has been john constantine's signature look she's also a bit posh with a higher class of clientele for her magical services including the queen and the royal family but still the same heartbroken wounded bitter magician with a conscience we all know from the comics so why do we not have matt ryan in that role because people love matt ryan as john constantine john constantine he had uh he had some comics come out back in early 2000s or not late 90s or something that really defined his character and the cockney accent is kind of what adds to the character the Mm -hmm. cigarette smoking ruggedly good looking kind of doesn't give a crap mentality that's why people love him so much. I think he's a fantastic character within that whole Justice League Dark, which is that otherworldly type of Justice League they have with like Dead Man and Zatanna and stuff. It's a shame to get rid of him again. Like they have so many other characters. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, and, and they've even mm-hmm. taken directly from the from John's Constantine story arc, as it says here, that already means that Joanna Constantine is this story's version of John Constantine, not an immortal Joanna Constantine who's been around for over two hundred years. Well, it's it's it, you know it's not like a, a show or an adaptation would forget like a big chunk of canon from say some prequels and just make <laughs> stuff up. You know, nothing like that ever happens. Like especially in the Star Wars universe. You know, the big thing about this is that this was one of those shows. I believe that was started before all of the lockdown stupidity that we all had to go through. So it kind of sat in a weird post-production hell. And then the big claim to fame on this was the fact that they released a press release that had all of the characters' pronouns. And some of them had they, them on them. Again, this is a graphic novel, goes back a couple of decades now. You know, this to me was a slam dunk. Just stay true to the source material. Maybe add a couple different angles to it. And you're going to rock this thing. You're going to light it up. You're going to get fan satisfaction. Gaiman has said that his book was, even back in the 80s, was very progressive. And I would argue that is the case. But they seem to have dialed this up to 11 for this Mm. show. They're almost going out of their way to to make these changes, to to seem relevant to modern day. When if it was so progressive back in the 80s, then surely it's, it's the same story that you can tell now. This article ends with a a little bit of a passive-aggressive tone that I I thought. So it says, uh, if you want the old Constantine, you can always revisit Matt Ryan in the season one of Constantine series and Legends of Tomorrow, as well as the comics. (laughs) It's like, if you want real Star Wars, you can always go back and watch the original trilogy. If you want real Star Trek, you can go back and watch TNG in the original series. I'm not getting that Tom Cruise welcome to my Top Gun Maverick movie. I hope you like it. We made it for you vibe. I'm getting two I'm getting two birds like this, like you know, like go get out of here, bigot. Yes, this is a case mm-hmm. if you don't like it, don't watch it. So I mm. might yeah. um, actually go back yeah. and watch Matt Ryan yeah. because uh, yeah. for me he is the embodiment of yeah. his character yeah. because he also voices in the animated series as well. If DC is doing one thing right, it's their animated stuff. Their animated stuff is so on point. It's yeah. so rad. Um, it, like the voice actors take it so seriously and you can just like tell. And that's why Purple has just been nailing it tonight with her takes on Constantine. What more could you ask for? The guy knows the character inside and out because he's been voicing him. It's like the end of that article just seemed like it was almost a challenge. It, it seemed like they were saying like, listen, just go watch the old stuff. And um, I think a lot of people are kind of in that mode of saying, fine, I will. You know, they're taking that challenge. They're going, all right, yeah, I would gladly go do that. Has ever. This is Salty Texas Sea. I am Corey DB. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you've seen and heard, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you on board. That way you know, and we have things like live streams, which we are going to be doing every Tuesday evening. 
Take care. I hope you're having a great 2022.